Welcome everyone. Appreciate you all joining this month's Australian Microsoft 365 Adoption User Group, but of course all is welcome around the globe for this session. The um, content can actually be found both online, the recording will be available up on our YouTube channel. The presentation that I'm going to be going through today is available there in the bit.ly link. I have dropped it into chat for you so that you can actually find it uh, again. It's pinned up the top. You'll see there's a pin there. Or if you go back a little, up a little in the uh, conversation thread, you'll actually find the presentation available for you. So let's kick in and get ourselves started. This is a recorded session. So if you don't wish to be on the recording, you may wish to drop off now. Okay. So apart from the recorded, if I ask that you can please stay on mute throughout the session. At the end, we'll have a chance for questions of both Rishi, Rishi, sorry, Rishi, Rishi, as well as myself after I've gone through some of the what's new. You can at any point get into chat and have a bit of a chat with us and any questions that you might have, please feel free to put them in chat and I'm more than happy to um, walk through those once we've got our guest speaker. If you do wish to ask a quick question out loud, please feel free to raise your hand. Um, good to see everyone all coming in and some great familiar faces. Okay, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we all are meeting from today and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I extend that respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders who've actually joined us. Now, code of conduct on the session, as always, I ask you please welcoming, opening to all, open to all viewpoints. We all come at this technology from a different standpoint. So I ask that we be kind, understanding, courteous, considerate. We use the appropriate gifts. We're patient with others and we be friendly. We're here, here to enjoy coming together each month. Okay. My name is Kirsty McGrath. For anyone that hasn't actually been along to this session, I am seeing some new faces here. I am an adoption consultant, an employee user experience consultant, uh, a, a specialist, a trainer, uh, you name it. I go right across the board and I have been running these adoption user groups now for well over eight years. So what have I been up to? I always start a little bit around what I've actually been up to along the way. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I went on a P&O comedy cruise and this was us coming back in at five o'clock in the morning. Oh, it was a little of a harsh, harsh early wake up at the end of a cruise. But uh, talk about stunning sights of Sydney coming back in through the harbour. And it was beautiful on the way out with the sunset, but coming back in again was amazing. So I had a lot of fun. What else have I been up to? The very next weekend, I went up to Townsville, which is my home town and went to a wedding over on Magnetic Island. If you've never been up north, you, um, you're you certainly missing out on a lot. On a lot. We often will say up when we get up there, oh, another shitty day in paradise. <laughs> so having a bit of fun. What else have I done? I went and did a uh, turtle with Chef Benny Riviera. So this is cake. You know me, I'm always getting involved in my caking and having a bit of fun. It was really wonderful to meet Chef Benny Riviera. If you've ever watched anything um, in regards to him based in New York as a very famous chef, He's on a lot of those programs and competitions. He is so lovely. So anything that you see online, you can actually bet that he really is nice. I then got given a challenge for my sister-in-law. Her favourite is a trifle and her favourite plants. She's got lots of them are bromeliads. So I got given a challenge to make her a trifle bromeliad cake. And I don't think I did too badly. I think I nailed it. So what have I been at from a work perspective? I was lucky to be involved in the Rimper Sydney Roadshow. I got asked two days before they had their opening speaker actually dropped off and couldn't be there and would I take over. So all of a sudden I was uh, smack bang in the middle of the RIMPA conference and if you're not familiar with RIMPA it's the um, Records Information Management um, Association. So uh, I would highly recommend if you're having anything to do with knowledge management, if you're an information manager, knowledge manager, then I would recommend going along. Um, within the space of 30 minutes of being there, they then asked whether I would actually be on the panel debate. <laughs> So they put me on the no around I don't like AI. It's like you're talking about a you know a positive, you know, heavy kind of person I need to debate debate that, you know, I don't like AI. <laughs> so I, I might have hammed it up a little going, it's dreadful, it's going to take my job. 
<laughs> I don't know if anyone believed me. And we lost, of course. Okay. What else have I been up to? I was really privileged as an MVP to be involved in the Copilot Plus PC launch that was kicking off the Microsoft Experience Center with the uh, media personalities and influencers that were brought in for Microsoft to be able to do that release. So this uh, laptop is, is this going to be like the next big thing or? It certainly is. I'll tell you a little bit more about it in a minute. So thanks. So anyway, what, what we're seeing is here, this is a, they bought in a big, huge PC and over on the right hand side, you can see in the Microsoft uh, video that came out. Of so in terms of the most, that's me, famous hand, that's about all you actually see of me in the, uh, in the video is just my hand. <laughs> so having a little bit of fun. So then Copilot Plus, plus the um, PC, if you want to actually know a little bit about Copilot Plus PC, I would recommend going in and watching the full keynote with Sacha and all of his team talking through all the various features and functionality. It was another MVP, Danielle. He actually runs the Copilot user groups here in Australia across that kind of um, and user component. He runs it at the Microsoft Reactor here in Sydney. If you ever want to join, I do go along each month. And I was lucky to see my ex-boss, Dan, so those that are Microsofties that are here would recognize Dan. I used to work with Dan. And then over on the right-hand side is Elizabeth. And we are going to be very privileged because next month, Elizabeth is actually going to come and talk. So she's going to talk about how uh, Microsoft deal with their communications internally. What does that look like as a comms team and a comms manager to use all the Microsoft tools? So we're looking forward to that one. I'll tell you a little bit more about dates because there is a bit of a shift. Uh, uh, yeah. So one of the things about the Copilot uh, Plus PC, if you are not understanding Copilot yet or you haven't got your head around it, I know we've talked about it a little bit, I would highly recommend that you actually start educating yourself if you've not dealt with it before. The new devices, so these are more the, the premium devices at this point, but the Surface, the new Surfaces have actually come out and they've got this Copilot button is actually embedded into the device. So it is on your keyboard. It's one of the biggest things that have come out in terms of one of the updates around devices that we're seeing right across, not just just the Microsoft Surface, but whether it's a Dell or an Acer or whatever it is that you actually use inside your organization, we're seeing all these new devices coming out with the Copilot button actually on the keyboard. So this will get, I suppose, um, more and more, we might, I don't like to use the word insidious, but you know, it's going to go right across devices, uh, across the board, and it's going to get more and more embedded as we go. So looking forward to that. Um, so the giveaway, for those that are here for the giveaway to the Digital Workplace Conference, uh, that is going to be towards the end of the session. You actually will need to be involved in this towards the end of the session as a giveaway. Really looking forward to being at the Digital Workplace Conference. Not only that, but I will actually be there as a speaker. So there'll be lots of fabulous speakers that are involved in the session across that digital employee experience. So there are over 40 speakers, lots of different sessions. So um, it's going to be one to go to. So let's go have a look now. Finally, we're getting to yourself, Rishi, our guest speaker. Um, now, Rishi, he is the behavioural and modern workplace architect at Microsoft. He has got some quite extensive experience across this, this particular space. And he is the author, designer, uh, along with others, of course, not around Mocha, but you're the main person, if I understand rightly, Rishi. I can let you kind of uh, speak a little bit more around what you do, how you do it, and how you can actually help us across this space. I'll stop sharing now. And I'll let you take over the screen, Rishi. Thank you very much, Kirsty. Um, so yeah, we have a whole team of people at Microsoft working on the modern collaboration architecture. Ross is here on the call and he is part of the team. Um, we have Craig on the call, who's also part of the Fast Track team. Um, who, and, and Craig and I work very closely together, helping customers on board, um, customers on uh, on Copilot um, and, and other teams and, and other um, capabilities around modern work. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure many of the people on the call are familiar with modern collaboration architecture. Um, but today, what we're intending to do is to just take everybody through a quick recap of the modern collaboration architecture for people who are new to um, the, the concept 
But while we are at it, we'll focus on the Copilot components of it. And we won't just focus on Copilot for Microsoft 365, but we'll see if we can look at the Copilot stack and we'll look at the various different aspects of the Copilot if, stack. If people want to come off, feel free to put questions and ask the question um, in the uh, chat probably window. Best to wait That's perfectly after fine. we have done the major presentation um, to keep your, your questions for a little bit later. Um, but yeah, if, if there's something that you think is, is urgent and is relevant to the to the conversation, please feel free to raise your hand and we'll come to you for a, for a conversation um, in, in between. Um, so the modern collaboration architecture was really designed to help put some thoughts around how we align how people work within the organization um, with the different dynamics that exist within an organization. Um, and then make to make sure that people then end up using the right tools for the job. Um, and that helps us achieve focus when we're trying to get to the right outcome. And so we didn't want to just give people an unlimited choice of which tools to use to try and get work done. But on the other hand, we wanted to direct people to say, well, while you're trying to get work done, which tools will help you create the most focus when you're trying to get work done? And so as a result, well, let's start with using certain tools for certain type of work. And, and the reason why we gravitated towards certain tools over others is working with the product teams and looking at the intent behind those tools we found that those tools were going to help employees create more focus when getting those particular tasks done. And so that was sort of the reasoning behind why we did the pairing the way we did it. And so I guess that's a good starting point with regards to how organizations can start to think about how they align with uh, align the M365 tool sets and other cloud collaboration tools within the Microsoft ecosystem with the work that people within an organization um, are trying to get done. So with that, um, now one thing you will notice is that this is a, a draft. So this is um, currently the, the latest version of the architecture. We are still working on it. And so you are all getting a sneak peek into what we are working on. So we would love your comments. So if there's specific feedback that you have on what you think is, is working or something that you would like to see um, us do differently, we would love your thoughts in the chat or um, when we finish, um, uh, we would love to have a conversation with you. So the typical mock-up conversation starts with helping employees find balance. Um, and, and one thing we are thinking about adding here is the whole conversation of productivity. Um, and, and especially over the last few productivity reports that, that have been produced, we are seeing that there is a reduction in the productivity output of Australia as an economy. And, and so one of the things that within the, in, within the Mocker team we've been debating is, is that a problem that Mocker as a, as a tool set can go or as a framework can help to address? And by mapping the right tool for the right job, can we go and experiment with helping to improve employee productivity? So I'll just leave that with you um, because we, we haven't come to a conclusion yet. But if the, the community has thoughts on if you think that's a problem worth um, the, the framework trying to contribute towards, we would love your, your thoughts on that. Mocha starts with the individual focus, right? Because at the end of the day, it's all about empowering individuals as a starting point. Um, and we hire individuals based on their skills and their experience. 
um, and we make sure that they are of the right mindset that aligns with the culture of the organization and we give them a success definition and we see the a similar set of needs and capabilities so we haven't really updated the needs and capabilities too much um, over the last couple of iterations of Mocha. Um, but what we have been doing is we have been tweaking the tools that align with the delivery of the needs. So one thing you will notice is that we've added Copilot to the organize part. Um, and that's because what we are seeing is that um, people do go to Copilot uh, and especially the chat aspect of Copilot, um, especially within the protected part um, of within the organization, where they go to just to organize their thoughts. And so they can go and quiz um, the emails, they can go and quiz their documents and get access to information in a conversational um, flow. And that helps them just organize where things are at. And they can use that information to say, well, how do I tackle my day? One of the really good examples here is as people come back from leave and they've got a whole bunch of unread emails. And so they can go to Copilot and say, well, what are the top things that as an individual I need to address for um, from emails that have um, been sent from my immediate manager, for example? And so Copilot can help prioritize those particular conversations. And so we are seeing that people are using Copilot more and more to stay organized. What we are also seeing is that Copilot is starting to create a foundation of really empowering individuals across the whole ecosystem. And so Copilot is featuring within Outlook. Copilot is featuring inside of OneDrive and within a whole bunch of different um, tools, including the Office suite. And so now we are representing Copilot right in the center of the individual because Copilot is not just a separate capability on the side, but is really a foundation of how an individual is feeling empowered. And so what we've decided to do is to really pull out a separate slide on this altogether and list all the different ways Copilot goes about empowering individuals. And as um, Kirsty mentioned, is Copilot plus PC is one of those highlights of how Copilot in Windows is going to start to play a, a major role in how people think about um, getting the information organized because Copilot is now directly built into Windows as a platform. Um, and that additional key within the, the keyboard is going to help get access to Copilot much quicker. So um, yeah, I guess it's, it's interesting to think about Copilot is not just as another app, um, but really as an enabler of a focus area of an organization and it empowers individuals as they work through different apps trying to get work done. And I think that was a major component of the conversation that within the Mocha team we were having. So as we move from an individual to the team conversation, the team foundation stay the same. So teams are still a group of individuals with interdependent activities that work towards a common goal. And so the definition of the team still remains the same. And we still believe that is really, really critical. What we're seeing is organizations that focus on that definition as they look at implementing Microsoft Teams as a platform have a much stronger foundation of good teamwork. In addition to that, as they look at creating good practices for teams, focusing on good outcomes or clear outcomes, creating um, leaders, uh, processes, skills, roles and responsibilities, and then picking the membership of the team um, is really important because a, a team is not just a random group of people. It has a, is a purpose, it has protocols. 
Um, and so I think having those protocols in place makes the construct in Microsoft Teams a lot more purposeful. And I think that's really important. Otherwise, what we see is there are um, teams created for random purposes within Microsoft Teams, and that becomes very hard to maintain and, and sustain. And so the sprawl within the platform is very hard to manage from an IT uh, lifecycle management perspective. The capabilities and needs within the teams, exactly the same. We haven't changed these at all, and they have remained the same. The tools have also remained the same. We haven't made any updates to these. One thing you will notice is that Planner has changed. So before we used to have a combination of tasks and Planner. Um, so since Microsoft... May I please say something? Because... because I'm a bit confused in when you said the lap. Okay. So since uh, Microsoft has this is the wrong um, meeting. Um, joined Planner and um, Tasks from a team context, um, the, the new icon is there. And, and so you'll see the new icon being used more and more. And so that's probably the only major difference in the, in the team context. However, we are making changes to the way Teams work now that Copilot is available. And so Teams as a construct have a huge opportunity to work differently. Because if, if we think about it this way, right, each team member has been empowered with Copilot. And so we have a whole bunch of people that are obviously working towards an outcome under the guidance of a leader, following processes, applying their skills, and having clear roles and responsibilities. But before, as they were doing their work as subject matter experts, they were working by themselves. But now each individual is having the support of co-pilot as, as they're doing their work. And so they are already empowered as they perform as a team member. And that's hugely powerful because what we see is that the outcome of having co-pilot available to each team member is larger than the sum of the parts. And the collective outcomes is improved by individual decision-making as the individual decision-making is enhanced. And I think this is really exciting, is that from a, from a team perspective, just by enhancing and empowering the individual, we are fundamentally um, accelerating um, the time to outcome for the team itself. So one of the examples to that is team meeting minutes. So as um, Copilot is able to take those team meeting minutes and you're able to go back and quiz it to try and figure out the action items, right? That saves people so much time in going and redoing and making sure that the meeting minutes get accepted and, and, the, and the whole bureaucracy around it. So that's, that's fundamentally saving enormous amounts of time. The other opportunity here is ideation. So having Copilot in Whiteboard that guides your idea creation exercises is another opportunity where you get to pause and sort of take guidance on, well, what else can we do as a team? And where else can we add value to the conversation? And so this is purely by just adding Copilot to the individual and enhancing the individual. However, Microsoft is going a step ahead. And not only are we giving Copilot to each individual, we are actually adding Copilot as a team member into the team construct. And this is fundamentally different to anything else we've ever done before. Because now AI is not only enhancing each team member, is now acting as an additional team member. And so it, there are seven core areas where currently that we know of it's, it's going to perform. The first one is it's going to create dedicated project focus. And so this is going to make sure that the collaboration focus is there within a, a, a team construct. 
The, the second area is the integration within collaboration tools. So out of Microsoft Teams, you get to use Copilot for integration with Loop, within Planner, and all the other collaboration tools. And so you don't even have to leave Teams for all that information to be exchanged. And the AI will do that for us. Copilot will do that for us. The third one is really interesting, um, meeting facilitation. And this sounds really interesting because uh, I haven't seen this in action, but I guess you can imagine where AI is, is facilitating conversations and trying to grow conversations based on um, where it thinks people have an opportunity to contribute to uh, the, the particular topic and particular outcome. Um, it can track time based on the agenda that has been um, outlined for a particular meeting to make sure that all the topics get covered. Um, task and action item tracking. So very often we commit to things like John, um, yes, we can get this done. Um, and yes, I will do this for you before next Thursday. So Copilot can capture that and put that in planner for Rishi um, as a note to then follow up on. Project management is, a, is an interesting one. So project level guidance can also be provided by Copilot inherently as the additional team member. Um, and this is where it can proactively reach out to team members within, a, within the team and make sure that they are actually completing tasks that they have been assigned and go and check to make sure that they have the information they need. And if they don't, then Copilot can proactively go and look for that information and get it to the individual. And this is going to be interesting because usually that proactive aspect has never been there in M365 before. And from a collaboration perspective, you've always let the human go and take the proactive step. So given that we are letting AI at times go and do proactive information gathering is, is something that is going to be really interesting to see how that lands. Um, AI will always be learning with regards to how particular initiatives work and projects work and how teams work um, and the ability for Copilot to learn the culture of the team is going to be interesting. Um, and then for Copilot to be available 24 seven. So if your team is a global team, then making sure that the information from one part of the globe or one, one time zone um, is then moved and forwarded on to the next part of the globe, the next time zone. So the information is not lost um, during handovers is, is another really interesting aspect of what Copilot as a team member will be able to do. So this, this is a fascinating sort of progression for, for Copilot as an additional team member. However, from a collaboration perspective, and I guess this is the whole point of Mocha, right? It's the modern collaboration architecture. It does create a whole bunch of questions. And so a few of the questions within the Mocha team we've been thinking about is, well, how do you collaborate with an AI? How do you instruct Copilot as a team member? Um, and yes, prompt engineering is a thing, but that's you have to be very specific with your prompts today. What about people who do not have English as their first language? How, how, how do we get them to collaborate with an AI? And so some of these questions we don't have answers to, but I guess they are questions worth thinking about. Um, what if Copilot goes and makes decisions that we're not happy with? And they're not the decisions we wanted made. And so Copilot is exactly that. It is co-pilot. It is not on autopilot. So somebody needs to be validating Copilot's work to make sure that it is heading in the right direction. And that's really the role of the team leader. And so now that brings us to the third aspect is that we need to understand Copilot's role within the team. And so Microsoft in its programming 
will program Copilot's role. And so I guess it's up to the team leader and the rest of the team members to now negotiate their roles around Copilot's role within the team. And so how will those dynamics work would be really interesting to see. So Copilot within Teams, I think is a really, really exciting opportunity. Um, and, and it'll fundamentally empower the teams to, to achieve their outcomes much quicker, much faster, and, and in a shorter time frames. Around individual readiness um, and individual growth, communities are still the primary platform. And we haven't made any changes to the role of Viva Engage as the primary community management platform. From an organizational foundational perspective, um, what you would have seen is um, Viva Topics has retired, but Copilot has, um, or Copilot for 365 has very much taken up its space as the place to go to get easy access to information across the organization. Um, and, and so every time you are looking for topics, instead of going and looking for um, topics in search, I now go to Copilot and go and ask Copilot a question around a particular topic, and I get access to the information based on um, access to information of documents and, and other spaces. And so now um, permission management becomes a really important activity across the organization. So Viva and Copilot, Viva in Power BI, Copilot in, um, sorry, Copilot in, in Power BI and Copilot in M365 are really key areas. Um, the the other thing that I think is still really important is the whole teams and communities conversation. Um, I still see organizations that will do teams and not engage. And perhaps they still don't understand that teams and communities both have different and equally important dynamics um, and having the same tool to address both the needs is not creating the right focus and we really have two separate technology platforms to address the two very different dynamics um, that the organization needs so um, yeah if you as, as a community are still seeing organizations create communities on teams um, please remind them that for communities, membership is optional and, and the larger the community, the better. And because of the noise that communities create, and that noise is very different to the noise that teams create. And when individuals are looking to make decisions and looking for notifications from teams and notifications from communities, they are in a very different mindset. And so you have to be very intentional with regards to, am I looking to get a, a piece of work done for, from a team outcome perspective, or am I looking for a piece of information from a community, right? Merging the notifications and merging the location is not necessarily useful. So having teams and engage as separate platforms because they address two, the two different requirements of the organization is really critical. Now, these are the three core collaboration aspects. So these are what we call as the foundational um, focus areas within organizations. Um, we also talk about uh, the extended focus area. So the business optimization, which looks after the, the core processes. Um, and I won't talk about that too much today. Um, and, and by the way, some of these slides are already available on, on the Mocha website. Um, and then we'll have the business differentiation, which talks about the automation of specialist processes. Um, and you can do that through um, developing your own 
uh, technical solutions or using Power Platform as your core capabilities. Um, once again, Copilot is going to play a major role in, in automating a lot of that. But really where I want to bring the conversation back to is the reason why we do all of this is to en empower people in the organization. And really, they are the ones that we want to make sure are feeling that they are being empowered by having the tools in place. And Copilot is a major part, and especially Copilot for M365 is a major part of that narrative for the individual. We want to make sure that people feel like that they're able to grow their professional identity within the workforce um, and to develop their brand. Viva Engage and LinkedIn are really important components. And as we protect people to establish their personal identity, Viva helps people with their work-life balance. But then as technologists, we also want to make sure that we are protecting and securing people's technical identities. And so this is the other area where, as the Mocha team, we are spending some time putting some thoughts into, well, what does this mean in an AI first world? And so we have made some changes to the way we see individuals enabled from a technical perspective. So we are now focusing on three core areas. So one is identity and management. So when we're talking about management here, we're talking about both identity management, but also device management. Because obviously individuals have multiple devices that they're working on these days. We're talking about data security and compliance, because that's really important for organizations um, these days, and then governance of the IT environment. Entra will play a really important role in, in the whole conversation. And so if we have a look at it at the next level of detail, what we typically see is that we have a whole bunch of identity management capabilities and we have a whole bunch of device management capabilities. And as the IT decision makers, um, these are really core, like these are not optional capabilities. These are core capabilities that are critical to every organization. In addition, we have data security and compliance capabilities. And once again, these are not optional. These are core capabilities. And so are these governance capabilities around collaboration control and organizational um, capability. Not, op not optional, these are core capabilities. And all of them are required to actually enable the technical identity of an individual. And because we know security is the foundation of all of that, you will see uh, that um, Sentinel and Defender, um, and especially our threat intelligence components, are at the, at the base of the slide because they provide the foundational security conversation. But in, in addition to that, now what we are seeing is a good and much easier way to query what's happening across the, the tech stack. And that is coming through Copilot for Security. Because now we can use Copilot for Security as the single pane of glass where you can go and ask questions around what's happening within this infrastructure of, of security, compliance, identity, and device management. And so that's really making life easier for IT to be able to look at um, individuals and look at devices from a single perspective within their organization. And so Copilot for Security and Copilot in Viva will play a really important role. Now, we know that for people, they want to look for balance. And so we've been talking a lot about the, the work and, and, and study and, and business um, conversations, but we also know that people have a life outside of work and they use Microsoft tools outside of work. And so at some point, there is this conversation of expression. How do we help people bring their authentic self to work? 
And how do we bridge the expression of people's identity? Maybe as a gamer, right? Um, or as a, as a family person or, or, um, or things that they enjoy outside of work and, and try and represent that at work. And so Microsoft Mesh, we feel, plays a role in that. And so you've been seeing over the last few months that as we roll out Mesh, especially within Microsoft Teams, the ability to create a digital identity and within Teams that's manifesting as an avatar, um, you can go and dress up your avatar any way you like. Um, and the avatar has a whole bunch of actions that you can choose how you represent um, them during meetings. And so the avatars are a really good way for you to express more of who you are as an individual outside of the, the constraints of your typical work environment. And so there are additional characteristics of that digital identity that we see will play an important role when we look at seeing the whole person and, and helping to, to accept that whole person at work. And so the person is still at the center of the whole modern collaboration architecture. So our original premise, we feel still stands true. So where organizations empower individuals with proactive resources like hope, self-efficacy, and give them engagement, people in return will give the organization the commitment, thought leadership, and positive deviance. And we see that by um, organizations implementing the tools that empower individuals to be effective individuals. Where organizations empower teams by giving them psychological safety, sense of achievement, belonging, autonomy, and trust. The individuals in return will give the team their creativity, accountability, energy, and their performance. And where the organization gives their people a sense of meaning, learning, mastery, connection, care, and support, the people in return will give their organization their most precious commodity, their attention, their time, and their organizational citizenship behavior. And that is the updated modern collaboration architecture. Still in draft, but we would love to hear your thoughts. Now, there is one, there's, we've got a couple more slides uh, before I finish the, the uh, presentation for today. But there is this new conversation that we are building, and, and we are really, really excited about that because we feel that we have this once in a generation opportunity um, with Copilot for Microsoft, where we have the opportunity of really enhancing the attention of employees in a way that technology hasn't been able to do before. Um, and because I really like maths, um, and, and, and Ross and I and I have, we've had lots of conversations over how awesome maths is. Um, we, we just decided to draw this up as, as some graphs and, and some geometry um, diagrams. So if we look at a cost of early distraction, right? So um, we're trying to get work done, task start, task finish, right? Actually, let me start again. A is task start, B is task finish, right? So in maths, when you have two points, the shortest distance between the two points is a straight line. And so we came up with the same premise that the shortest distance to completion of the task, the shortest time required to complete the task is a straight line. And so we drew a straight line. But then we came up with a distraction event, event E1. And the distraction event actually takes our attention on a tangent. And we decided that we will name the degree of distraction D, right? 
And our, our degree of distraction takes our attention in a particular direction and for a period of time. And so the opportunity here is that Copilot can actually help you create focus by enhancing the way work gets done. Right? And the first opportunity is addressing inertia. So very often when you are getting writer's block, and, and this is often the case when you are having to create content, and especially content that's never been created before, right? or you're having to compile content from multiple locations, and you're, and you're needing to make a start. So inertia is, is very, very common, and I know I suffer it all the time. And funny enough, and, and sorry, Kirsty, I actually had inertia putting this presentation together. And I actually only started doing it a few days ago. Um, so addressing Can't inertia. Imagine that. Can't imagine that, Rishi. <laughs> right? And so Copilot really helps with addressing yeah. that inertia. It does. It does. I agree. Absolutely. Right? So so that's a, that's a really awesome opportunity. And then the second one is preventing distractions. And that's because as you start, every time you get stuck, you can go to Copilot and you can get answers. And that keeps the momentum and as you keep the momentum going you feel like you can you're still getting work done and that helps you keep focus and so these opportunities are rarely delivered by technology so where in the past we have seen and, and our mobile phones have have been probably the biggest culprits where we have seen the notifications on our devices create one of the biggest dis distractions in our in our um, environment. Copilot is an opportunity to create that focus, and it's a fabulous opportunity. And so um, I'll be there at the Digital Workplace Conference um, later this month, um, and we've got a presentation exactly on that. Um, and we'll be talking about it um, on the 31st at a 3.45 p.m. session. Um, and Debbie is here in the call. And thank you very much, Debbie, for inviting me to speak. Um, and I'll be talking um, a couple of sessions after you, Kirsty. So uh, um, just just flow on from from my wheel. <laughs> that's it. That's it. So, so yep, you'll you'll do your wheel session. Then we'll have another session, then we'll have the afternoon tea, and then I'll I'll do my session as the last session of the day. So as long if as we're not this... competing, Rishi, if we're competing, then we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so if this topic is of interest, uh, please come and, and see me um, at the Digital Workplace Conference. Um, we also have published a white paper um, specifically called A Leader's Guide to Attention Management in Microsoft 365. Um, that's available now. Um, at aka.ms slash attention MGMT paper. Um, please go and download that. Please read it. We would love your feedback. Um, and honestly, that's all I've got. Um, happy to take questions. That I know that uh, uh, Ross has been answering a whole bunch. Um, but yeah, people want to come <clears throat> go on mute. Please feel free to raise your hand if you've got a particular question that you'd like to ask. I'm more than happy to hand it over for a few questions for a moment. Yep. And yeah, if you, if you have questions of Ross as well, um, yeah, feel free to come, on, come off mute and ask Ross a question. And Craig, we've had come and present December last year in regards to Copilot. So you can always look on the YouTube channel. Um, you know, we've had a few presentations around, you know, what is Copilot or how it's actually being used, if you want to have a look. Um, yeah. I might underscore a couple of things Rishi was was saying in case uh, people are still thinking of that question. So one of them is um, we spend a bit of time thinking, what is the question that Mocker is trying to answer? So if you have a question about, well, how do I use a particular part of, of Microsoft 365 or why, the which tool when is one of the recurring themes. Those are the types of questions that if you don't see the answer inside Mocha, send them through to us because those are the challenging sort of things where that's part of what we're trying to tackle. 
Um, the other thing I was going to say was Mockett does, uh, introduces a perspective that should resonate well with this team of if we're looking at intranets and corporate comms, because it looks at how how is the individual helped? What's the WIFM for the individual? And separately, but just as importantly, what's the WIFM for the organisation or the team? And the team could be corporate comms or the team could be security and audit that underpins everything. Both those things are critically important. And not everybody in an organisation understands the importance of a team need, like a corporate comms team, versus the individual's need. So Mocha tries to help to work through that that challenge so that that gives you something to work with. Um, and really then, if we look at Mocha versus Copilot, Copilot is the accelerator. So Mocha exists without Copilot and did, but you can have a look at everything that Mocha does. Then in this slide where if you go and have a look at it, Copilot becomes an overlay. And so you just can think of uh, Copilot as being the accelerator or the facilitator. Or the other thing that I really like somebody put in the comments was um, it's freeing up the time and attention so that the human can relax into what they're trying to do. So if it's a call like this or it's, a, it's any sort of teamwork, the human can relax and think a little bit more about what it is that they're trying to do in the moment, knowing that Copilot's got their back and is going to take care of minutes and actions and those those sorts of things. But but more than that, Copilot also has the integration points. So for the non-Microsoft pieces, which are critical to every real customer, um, Copilot's built into a, these Microsoft type solutions, but it's also a, a glue point that allows you to tie in the non-Microsoft pieces as well. Yeah, but I particularly like the um, new white paper, Rishi. It's um, it certainly got some great stuff in there around attention. If it, and I had put it up when it first came out to the user group and this information. I uh, highly recommend going and having a read. If there aren't any other questions coming up, we might go over into some of the what's new with adoption. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you and so we'll much you. for Rishi and Ross. And uh, well, let's let's go. I'm going to go and present my screen now. I have changed things up a little when it comes to my user group. Um, what was happening was, and let me just fix the screen here and just move things around. Um, what was happening was we were hitting kind of each month, and the updates that were actually available. Um, quite extensive and it was getting to the point where the user group was pushing out to two to two and a half hours just to try and go through both a speaker as well as what's new across both adoption as well as what's new in 365. Um, and I mean, I love having our speakers in like Rishi and that's more important to me than anything. Now, I know I've asked before, you know, do you want me to do all the what's new across, um, you know, across 365? And there was a bit of a resounding yes. Uh, however, in terms of people being able to stay or watching the videos, I'm seeing more of a no. What I'm doing is I'm going to actually do more what's new in adoption. I will touch on some of the what's new based on the blogs, but I'm not going to go into the what's coming that might actually be available through the roadmap because there's sometimes a bit of crossover, but there's just too much content content when I do the two of them. As it is, we've still got, you know, a, a lot of slides here, but I'm trying to limit it down a little bit more for you. Now, there is a ton of stuff. I could literally just focus on the what's new to adoption from here on in and not even do the what's new to 365, but I do know that it actually helps you along on your journey. So let's kick in and get started. Now, if you didn't actually watch the Microsoft 365 community conference sessions, I would highly recommend going in and actually having a look. They've been recorded and they're actually up and available in the Microsoft community learning on YouTube. There are two in particular you might want to go and have a look at. One of them is the delivering business value. So that one is actually the, you know, the caravana session down the bottom here. And another one was driving satisfaction with the, um, you know, for, around AI for Microsoft employees. So it does go into um, content around some of the analytics as well. So I do recommend those two sessions. Now, don't forget this presentation is available. It is pinned into chat and it's there for you to be able to look at. Now, 
On the champion's call, it's got to maximize your AI transformation with your co-pilot investments. I particularly loved this month's session, okay, when it, this last month's session, when it came to some of the content that was actually included in it. I'll go through a couple of things as a core pull out for us. It goes through, and I would recommend watching the video to understand. There was lots there around the, the kit and planning and analysis. It's the analysis that I particularly liked in terms of some of the content that was in there. So what it did was it actually looked at the dashboard and some of those Viva Insights, what you're actually going to see between one or the admin center. So the two core things that you're going to look at your analytics. If you're trying to understand, you know, what are you going to get out of it? It's here that you're going to have a really good look at the presentation. It goes through all the usage reports, the messages, the adoption score, the insights and other administration. So it talks through there is a ton of pages in there as part of being presented to to really untangle what you can do from a, um, a kind of a usage report type perspective and what do those reports look like. There is a new adoption Power BI template that's come into play. This is based on the, uh, if you're an analyst, so they've got this um, Power BI template that gets assigned to the analyst with lots of um, report content that comes out of it around adoption summary. One, if you're not in or if you're using Copilot, <clears throat> then I would highly recommend to make sure that you get assigned being able to see this. There is another one around the Impact Power BI template. This is all coming up and available very soon. Now, you can actually filter this information down. You can do start and end dates up to 180 days, if I remember rightly. Or was it 90? I can't remember now. It's quick as I, I thought I had it in the notes, but I'm pretty certain it was up to the 180 days. Okay. Something else that came through is that new community news desk. So there's a, um, in the tech community, you can actually go in there and you can hear from those that are in the community around what's actually going on. It's where we can connect and collaborate and share different information. It also puts up the Microsoft at Mondays. Now, if you haven't seen it, I have talked about it before. Both Heather and Caruana talk, um, uh, you know, on a, on a Monday, it's bi-monthly, so it's pretty much every fortnight, if I remember rightly, in terms of bi-monthly, where they go through some of the, the content and information around what's new. It's a good one to keep an eye out on. The Community Learning Channel. Now, I touched on the Community Learning Channel when it came to the conference and some of the outputs from the conference recently. There is a lot more on there that you'll actually find might really help you. It's created by Microsoft and MVPs and other specialists across the communities, giving you lots of great learning bites, and they can be anywhere from, you know, five, you know, two to five minutes right through to an hour long, depending on what it is at a particular conference. Lots of great content in there to be able to help you on your learning journey. Now, in the release notes for the adoption site, there is some fabulous new information that's actually being dropped in, like always. You know, I'm very focused on this with being, you know, in the adoption space and this being an adoption user group. There are some new resources. However, a lot of it is more a collation of Microsoft content that's now being plugged into the adoption site to try and make it a little bit easier to find. So some of it has been out there for some time. Some of it hasn't as it starts to actually build it up. Now, on um, some of the core pieces, and I'm going to discuss some of these, so there will be a couple of different ones that we'll discuss. Now, I've also pointed to these in the past. So for example, the knowledge management side, although it says it's new, we have already discussed it. And even though I've gone in there sort of regularly and clicked through, it still will class as new for a little bit longer. Okay. There is a new Microsoft Outlook kit. When it, There's a new adoption kit for Microsoft Outlook, the new Microsoft Outlook. Try and reword that. Some fabulous content in there. I particularly loved some of the, the migration kit information. I have fed back into the Outlook team uh, a few of the things that I would actually like to see added in for us. But let me go through some of the core content that you're going to find as part of that, you know, migrating to the new Outlook. Now, whether you have done it already or you're looking at it or considering it, 
Eventually, you know, we're you know going to see. I'd say, um, you know, most organisations will eventually come over for some of that new kind of fluid framework and some of the other information when it comes to Loop and Copilot, for example. The hard part is. Um, Copilot is being kind of plugged in. It's rolled out now in the classic Outlook, which makes people less inclined to kind of want to go over to the new Outlook. There's a bit of a downside of it. Now, as part of the adoption kit that you can go and download, it's got this, you know, what is some of the resources that are actually available, and it's got links to content. Inside the kit, when we start to go in and we drill down, you're actually going to find some of these core documents. There are a few in particular that I really did love that was in there. So let's go and have a look. So some of the things like the sample communication, the surveys that are actually in there, you know, some fabulous, oh, I love the FAQs. Let's go have a look. So it gives you in terms of the sample communication. It's got both your pre right through to post for pilot as well as the actual upgrade. So this is sort of stock standard. Now, it doesn't have all the pretty look and feel like you might have with the Copilot where it's got kind of banners and pictures and other information. It's fairly raw in that you can actually um, manipulate the way you like and put in your own banners. It's a PDF document. It's not a Word document, but you can still just copy the information out of the PDF or go into Word and open it up using Word because you can use Word to open up that PDF if you need to so that you can start to craft and you don't have to then sort of copy and paste. So that's some um, fabulous communication components. Now, in the sample user survey, it has both the pre, the post available in there when it comes to the pilot, as well as the find a champions form. Now, this is something a little new that we've not seen before. In fact, you know, I would love to see more of this when it comes to adoption content throughout the various options in terms of bringing in our um, champions. There's a, uh, a go in, have a look at it. I did, it was the one thing that I did particularly like, but the pre-upgrade surveys, um, a survey has some great content, um, quick and easy. You'd have to, of course, build out the form yourself. It's just a PDF document. It's not actually a, you know, a pre-built, I can copy this uh, Microsoft form from Microsoft. Okay. So it's a build your own. The um, FAQs, there are approximately 25 pages in the FAQs. There is plenty of content that's actually in there that's more technical in uh, in its um, um, content. However, there's also a lot that's actually in there that will help you for your end users without you having to uh, build this all yourself. Although you could use Copilot to help you build some of the top questions, which I've done recently when we didn't have this. It's like, give me the top 25 questions um, my users might ask in my business as we're rolling out. Use Copilot, I've done this a bit, okay? So there's some fabulous content that's already pre-built for you with answers. So put it into your whatever you use as your um, wiki kind of for the business for FAQs. I personally use SharePoint and build it out with my SharePoint. I have whole learning, you know, platforms that I do for that. So part of the links that are in there is the new YouTube channel. So it um, hasn't been around for that long. So the new Outlook for Windows with content in it. At the moment, there are five videos on there that have all been posted up over the last two weeks around how to actually do certain core components in Outlook. Um, the new Outlook is uh, evolving very quickly at the moment. It still has lots that you sort of can't do that we're asking for, but as quick as I kind of go, I don't have it, they are making those updates, okay? So it's an evolving product right at the moment still. Still kind of in its baby steps. There is also in there a download. Those downloads are infographics. So there's two infographics that are actually available for you around the total economic impact if you're trying to kind of convince kind of why you might and then the, the future of Outlook on Windows. So they're the two that are in there. They're a little salesy. Um, I have 
fed back to the team that I would actually like to see the quick start guide that we have, like we do for Outlook. We need a quick start guide with the generic features available up in the that productivity library. Um, so I've asked, can we have something along those lines? If you are trawling through and you're looking at this, please feel free to feed back to me. Anything in particular you feel is actually missing, I've I've written a whole long list of things to them that I would like to see, including um, the um, uh, strategic, um, like impact, it's a couple of impact uh, spreadsheets, for example, that we've got that have been put out there in Teams and Copilot and from a change perspective. Uh, so I've kind of gone, there's a, there's a couple of things that I would still like to see rolling out. Outlook is probably not as complex as some of the other bigger rollouts, but it's going to have a big impact on people not loving the journey. Okay. Um, another component was if you look online and as part of the links that they've provided, it's got this getting started with the new Outlook. And in there is what can you do in which application? It's a yes, no, yes, no kind of feature and functionality. A great table is on that page. There's lots of other content on there, but it was the table that I particularly loved. It's a really good one that you might want to put up on your site to help people kind of understand what is or isn't available on the education piece. Now, the launch kit for Copilot has actually gone live now with general availability. It was pushed out there as a bit of a trial. It is now out there, um, and the launch day kit is new. It is including a ton of fabulous content. I love it. I love what Caruana and the team are doing across this space. It's got flyers and lots of booth items and banners, digital banners, emails, um, social media type stuff, plus all the support assets like logos for example so it's got in there as part of there's a here the implementation guideline here there's a um, presentation in there I would highly recommend going and having a look through some really good content that you might want to put into your change plan for example I usually do powerpoint as my change plans I make it easier than trying to do word documents because I'm often presenting it anyway so there are some really good planning and logistics timelines, for example, of what you would actually do when it comes to um, this event planning and using this launch kit and what you could actually do around it to um, garner interest and excitement across the business as you start to push it out for education. Inside those asset folders, so the things that I was just talking about, the flyers and the booth items, it gives you a bit of an idea of just how in-depth the team have actually gone for us to to be able to drive this information out from a um, from a from a media comms type perspective, some really good content. You'll see things like, for example, on the flyers, the ability for us to be able to just swap out some of the information, like you know, put in your date. It's got all its look and feel based on the the colours and designs in there automatically. It is a little. Microsoft markety in some respects, but at the same time, it means that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. If we want to do fast um, launches when it comes to the likes of this content, this is how we do it because it's already pre-built. We can really speed ourselves up with this. Some of the things like the email, so the launch emails here to give you a bit of an idea, I've dropped one in where you can just sort of swap out. You're invited to come along to our launch day to experience blah, blah, blah. That. Okay. Um, and then you can customize it as you need to, depending on what it is you're trying to do internally. Some of the other core components. If you haven't actually seen it, when it comes to Copilot, you've got the community events for Copilot. There are lots of AMAs. There was one recently that I didn't realize and it hadn't got put up until a bit last minute. There was a change one that went up. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see it between last month and this month. Um, I have gone in and looked at doing subscription. I would recommend maybe subscribing to the feeds because there are lots of great AMAs that are going on. So the next one that, um, the, sorry, one that was just recently on was the um, one around security and governance that's actually in there. 
Now, this one in particular is about um, just typing into the blog post. Some of them are, are an in-person like or a virtual type one. So there's in-person ones, there's virtual ones, and then there's just put things into the comments and it's a... Um, it's a, that ask me anything, you know, online type, you know, chat. We're here to answer your questions when you drop it in at a particular time. Now, a lot of times this is at all hours of the morning for us. You know, it's usually at one or two o'clock in the morning, so it doesn't work. But that doesn't mean you can't come back in and actually put questions in along the way. You know who was included, so you can always tag them if you need to. Another feature that has just rolled out is the um, when it comes to Microsoft Designer, there is a new presentation that's actually been dropped into the adoption site when it comes to Designer and how you can actually um, talk to Designer to be able to create pictures, for example, for you and what that actually looks like. There's a whole deck on how to do it, a bit of training as well. I do particularly like that deck. Okay. The Learning Hub has had more content to actually go into it when it comes to Copilot Learning. Go and have a look. There is a ton of new scenarios that have gone in from an adoption perspective when it comes to the scenario library. So many new personas to be able to help us when it comes to comes to this. So there is a new one. There's HR, legal, marketing, um, operations, and sales. These are all new personas that have dropped in with the scenarios of how you might actually use Copilot in your business with some step by you know, what you might do, what you might ask it as part of that. Um, fabulous resources for you if you're building out even training, for example, you could link it back. Um, how can you drive forward a particular scenario to reach the various areas of your business as part of adoption? There is the white paper that's gone out of applying AI at scale. This is Microsoft's AI at scale white paper of how they actually had done it. Um, what did it look like? I I particularly like there's some great information in there around their champs community, how they did their training, for example. Those are they were quite. Uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's an overly long white paper, but very much worth reading, especially when you've got such a large organisation like Microsoft rolling it out. There's a lot in there that um, you could apply to smaller rollouts, heaps that you could apply to small rollouts. So please don't discount it on your journey. There is an AMA coming up when it comes to the Copilot in Outlook, so the new uh, Copilot in Outlook. The topics that they're actually going to talk about are very specific. They won't actually touch on topics that sit outside this because, of course, there's a bit of a it's a bit of a hot topic when it comes to the new Outlook, for example. So they're going to be very focused on how Copilot is working inside Outlook. Okay. The Copilot deployment kit when it comes to Viva Amplify is now generally available. So I've gone into Viva Amplify. I've kicked off the kit now to see what it actually looks like. It's really quick and easy to be able to do with lots of fabulous pre-built content in there that you could customize as you need to, to push it out. Because Viva Amplify is about pushing out um, comms to all the various Microsoft products with a click. So you build across one and you can just push it out across whether it's a Teams channel, whether it goes into Viva Engage, whether it goes live on your SharePoint into news and it goes out as an email, for example, you can just do it and it just pushes it out right across. So it's got pre-built content for you to be able to do that. If you don't have Viva Amplify, as a subscription as part of the Viva suite. So whether you've got that or not, um, you won't have it unless you have the Viva suite subscription on top of the standard. I would highly recommend you can just purchase license for particular individuals, one to have if you sit across this space because as adoption um, or communication specialist, there's some really good content and good products in there for you to be able to work with as a license. 
There's also a um, another blog post that's actually gone out there around Copilot. A lot of the adoption stuff at the moment is focused on Copilot being the latest and greatest. So sorry if it seems like it's a lot of Copilot or you're not thinking of it. Um, there's been more content coming soon. Now, what they've got is that what have they learned about over the last year? The one thing that I particularly liked in here was the 11 by 11 tipping point. I'm seeing a lot of organizations purchase the one to 10 licenses inside their business. They're trialing it for you know two or three weeks. They're not doing the quarter of a business like we've actually recommended. And then within a couple of weeks, they're kind of going, oh, we're not quite getting the value out of it. One, usually they've not purchased enough. And two, they're not giving themselves enough time. So the research has actually found, you know, across the board that it's 11 minutes are saved over the 11 weeks to be able to see productivity improvements across the variety of areas. So there are four areas, which are productivity, their work enjoyment, work-life balance, and then the ability to then attend fewer meetings. So it's taking them a little bit of time to pick up some of these skill sets. We need to have, I suppose, a little bit more patience to be able to learn that new skill along the way. What they also talked about was how they empowered their champs to lead the internal training creating quick demo videos, for example, to share their skills throughout the business and, you know, what that looked like around that rewards and recognition for empowering the champs. I did particularly like reading, you know, how they managed to do that. And, well, it's in also the at scale. So it talks about it in here as well as that at scale white paper too. Okay. Another one is there is a support tips part two that's actually come out around Copilot. It's quite a long page. It's a blog that's gone out there. There is plenty in there as well from a end user standpoint that you could use as FAQs inside your business. Things that are kind of going, well, why am I getting mixed results when I'm dealing with large documents? It's because you really can't go at this point, we try not to go over 20 pages or 15,000 words. So people are trying to do, you know, summarization, for example, of a, you know, 70 or 80 page document. It is not going to work right now. Now, that has been extended out from the original, but um, it's still getting bigger and bigger. We're going to see more and more of that changing over time. But in the meantime, some great FAQs for you. Custom background gallery. So there's new Pride Month background galleries if you want some pretty new backgrounds um, and you uh, are fully supportive of Pride Month, which uh, I know I certainly am when you have family, very, very close family members that um, we, we tend to wear a lot of pride stuff. In fact, I have a lot of pride stuff that comes into the home on a, on a regular basis with the T-shirts. So, <laughs> so uh, if you like it, then go pull those down. There is on the adoption side, the SharePoint lookbook has had an update. In the past, it was a bit more a, um, a sway. We kind of had sway lookbooks in the past. Then there was other type. I think there was like a, an Azure back end kind of book that got put out. Now it's the Share, it's like a SharePoint page where you can go in and you can actually have a look at all the various types of SharePoint plugin sites that you could use. There's some fabulous ones in there, some new ones that we haven't actually seen before. So from the communications perspective, there was a few that I particularly liked across here. There's lots of plug and play SharePoint sites, both in the communication and from a team perspective. The few that I particularly liked, and I've reached out to the team to go, can we have one for change champions? Because there's no change champion type plug and play when it comes to SharePoint at this point. However, the ones that I particularly liked were the Learning Central template and, you know, giving you some of those site capabilities and building it out. So it's a pre-built one that you can use. Another one was the Training Design Team template and the Training Course template, some being more externally focused, some more sort of project focused for you out of these core lookbook templates that are available for you. If you haven't seen them before, and I know I've spoken about these um, across the board as we've been going, so for anyone that's actually new, things like having a good brand central, for example, there are other new ones that have come into play. We've seen the employee onboarding. 
But some of the new ones that we haven't really seen in the past are things like having our volunteer centre, for example. Um, another one is the, the HR and some of these event type ones. So there's some really great new ones in there to be able to support you on your learning journey. Okay. The SharePoint Embedded Hero side of things. So SharePoint Embedded, we talked about last month and what that actually meant to be able to bring together uh, some of the ways that we can embed when it comes to SharePoint. There is like an AMA that's actually coming up soon. This is going to be a live stream video that's going to um, be available. Now, sometimes the recording is available afterwards. Not always the case. When we look at the timing, it's probably going to be about about one o'clock in the morning. So if you're keen, it might be one to get involved in. Cross fingers, we have the recording afterwards. The new page that's actually gone up on the adoption site is how Microsoft does IT. This is where you can find some of those white papers, for example, but there is a lot in there to be able to help and support you. The one area in here that I really liked was understanding the councils and getting to know the various councils that you can actually put into play to support the certain technology that you've actually got within the business. So when you have in and you go and have a look at it, you can click through and have a bit of a read. Uh, we have looked at that council around, you know, Copilot, what does it look like to have it, so that ethical council around AI, but there are other ones in there for you to be able to go and have a look at. Okay. Microsoft have put out some new adoption content when it comes to Planner. So these are kind of a day in the life of. There's two that have gone up, a day in the life of the marketing manager using Microsoft Planner, as well as the next one, it's then the product manager using Microsoft Planner. So two new day in the life of, as well as some of the others that are already there that we've talked about in the past. So um, I do particularly like these. They are PDFs that you can download, okay? The Microsoft community page, which is what I actually talked about a little bit earlier in the piece. If you go onto the Microsoft community page, there are lots of great links, like I talked about, the learning channel. It's all wound up into one space so that you can go in and have a look. There are plenty of blogs listed out if you want to keep up to date on what's actually going on across the community. The MVPs are in here and supporting you. It's got the Microsoft at Mondays links, all the previous Microsoft at Mondays, if you want to go back and have a look at the topics and watch the recordings um, for knowledge. The community days that are available that you can actually go and join in on. So you can go and, and watch out and watch these um, yourself. So there is a calendar that's actually on that page to be able to support you. Now, the what's new to 365? I have tried to limit this down just a little. I won't go through a lot of the depth of products like I used to do in the past. So apologies for those. I know I've got some really hardcore um, uh, followers who really love this, but I am trying to look at some of the top features and functionalities now that is rolling out to 365 to be a little bit more focused for you. Okay. So in the what's new for Copilot, some of this I've talked about in the past, some I haven't, some I particularly liked as a focus. So let's go through some of these core functionalities that I think are going to be of value. I did talk about some of the, um, I've talked about the Viva Insights and the Copilot dashboard that you actually get depending on the license that you've got. And I've talked about this Copilot impact summary um, from the analyst. We've talked about that a little bit earlier. So these are all core components to be able to support you. But I like some of the adoption trends and how things are actually tracking across Copilot to be able to support you as part of your journey. I am hitting my camera. <laughs> okay. Uh, another feature in terms of what's new was the rewrite SharePoint pages. Now, we know that Copilot is coming to OneDrive and SharePoint. It not necessarily been fully embedded yet. However, we do have pushed through and coming right now the ability to be able to do rewrite of your text using Copilot in SharePoint. That has gone out now. 
Okay. So although it's not fully embedded as part of the SharePoint environment, some features are starting to trickle in. And it will, uh, and based on some of the stuff I've seen around Copilot and SharePoint, um, we have some very impressive stuff coming down the line. Uh, some of the stuff that I saw when I was actually over in Seattle around this was standing ovation, like the team. It was um, rather impressive. So I'm really looking forward to some of the Copilot features in SharePoint. And if you're not on that Copilot journey, as I said, uh, time to get started because it's getting, it, I mean, it's just in baby and infancy as well. Imagine what it will be like later. <laughs> I mean, it's already doing a ton of stuff across a ton of products. Um, try not to get too far behind. Have a play wherever you can. Now, a uh, new feature is the Microsoft Designer in Copilot and being able to add visuals now into both Word and PowerPoint. So you can ask Copilot to go create an image of, and you could do that directly now across both. It's not just a uh, find an image anymore. It is also design and create. So it's now in there. And um, I've been having a bit of a play with this one. It's a lot of fun. In fact, you're going to see one coming up when we hit the um, uh, winning of a winning of the ticket for the digital workplace conference. So that's coming up soon. Okay. Another feature is the ability to be able to transform your messages. So some different functionality for Copilot in Teams, not just, you know, finding information. It's actually being able to write and rewrite or rewrite it in a particular tone and adjust it directly okay, before you push it out. Oh, by the way, over on the right here, I've put in a prompt like a pro. There's two, there's actually, you know, there's three different, um, uh, sorry, this is two here, two different links. So go and have a look at both of them. There's got some different content. The prompt like a pro has got some really good content in there around prompting as well. The accessing more information now allows you to be able to bring in those reference documents and be able to support you when it comes to Microsoft Word. You can do it across all files. You can do it in meetings. You can do it based on people. So you can go find me documents I was working on recently with Rishi, for example. So you can then look at that as well as attaching. So there's lots more information that you can, you can uh, work with now. We've got the ability to be able to do some richer presentations. This is using some of the designer features and functionality, uh, being able to bring in some more, it's a bit of kind of what we talked about in terms of some of that designer functionality. Um, the other thing is you can also create your presentations now with other um, PDFs and different word types, for example. So you can start to bring in a lot more content when it comes to creating your presentations. They're higher quality. Um, you can uh, you refine your designs, for example. You can create some more robust structure um, there's more transitions that you can work with to be able to get through it. Thanks very much, Rishi. I appreciate you joining. And thanks, Ross, as well. Okay. Sharing work plans with Copilot Assisted Loop Pages. So now it's not just about asking the question. It's about drafting pages using other content. So you can go in now um, and the, the, the field and the prompting you can use based on existing pages to create your new page, a bit like templating. So um, I'm particularly liking this. It's finally taking Loop to a bit of the next level when it comes to uh, having Copilot in there. Other new features is, of course, we've talked about it coming into Classic Outlook. Uh, if you haven't got it in there yet, it will drop in fairly soon. So you can do both to summarize. You'll see Copilot on that left navigation, as well as being able to draft and coach in Classic, not just the new. The what's new in Teams functionality, I've not put any of the content to drill down into the what's new. A lot of this we've actually covered off in the past. There is um, lots of features and functionality updates, a little bit more guidance than we might not have gone than we might have gone through in the past. But a lot of the features and functionality in the what's new I have already gone through. So there was nothing really new to talk about here. 
There is, however, some new functionality that's come into our Teams rooms and devices to be able to push out some digital signage onto our devices in our Teams rooms. So if we want some different messages to go out, we can go them and have them put onto the devices inside your meeting rooms. Good from a bit of an adoption standpoint, things you might need to push out from comms perspective. The what's new to SharePoint, uh, go in and have a look. A lot of this I've actually gone through in our previous sessions. I'd recommend going through and having a little bit of a read. Now, this didn't go up until I think it was June the 4th or the 5th. That was the day I was running the user group. So a lot of this I have already previously gone through. There is the on-demand, in-depth learning content. Now, when it came to the community conference, which I've given the link to you before and talked about, what's happened is they've put a blog out in regards to SharePoint of all things that's new, and there are eight videos. So there are eight videos they've pulled together for you in this one blog, if you want to go to, to be able to watch all things that is coming to SharePoint. So I, uh, it was a great roundup of the sessions, if you want to watch those, instead of trying to trawl through all of them on their um, YouTube channel. There's also the what's new to OneDrive. So the OneDrive sync up is actually being pushed out, one to go and have a watch of. In the what's new to planner, so this is if you've actually got the the um, um, license, so part of that project planning license to flow through into planner, so that you can start to drive and dip and drill down in your plans. So as part of your plans, you'll be able to come in and look at things like people's goals and assignments. So you can drill down. Another component that's come into Planner is the ability to be able to do subtasks. Now, this is if you've got, of course, your pro subscription as part of this to be able to get in and do some subtasking. What's new to Forms has been a bit of a revamp when it comes to the experience around Forms. There is some great new templates. We're very used to going in and just doing a survey or a quiz, but some of the template galleries, some new ones I particularly like is invitations that you could do with Forms and then check-ins, for example. So um, some cool new templates to be able to pull from for your starting directly um, on a new form or quiz. Uh, some of the other ones is boosting engagement. I have touched a little bit on this in the past. It's now being rolled out to be able to rewrite your invitations with Copilot, as well as being able to follow up with non-responders using Copilot. Another one is that syncing of Excel data. This one I particularly like because it's actually about doing it with your group. So if you're using Microsoft Teams and you create a form, that form and the Excel that actually sits behind it, it's based on a new group form so that those that are within the team can actually go and see the results rather than just having one individual still as an owner, you can actually have group forms and group quizzes. Another core component is being able to add and remove people from your form response notification emails. So you can just say who you actually want involved to be able to get that. When it comes to Viva Insights, there is a lot going on in terms of Viva Insights. There's been a mass amount of changes over the last couple of months because Viva Insights is becoming a bit of a... Um, a core place to be when it comes to that licensing, especially around the likes of Copilot and understanding those Copilot metrics. There is lots of new out-of-the-box leader reports, for example. Uh, I particularly like that how do we estimate those Copilot assisted hours. It actually gives you, as part of that dashboard, some more functionality. Inside Copilot in Excel, there is working with columns and formulas. There are two things to be able to help you. Being able to split your columns when it comes to a single column over to multiple columns and divide out that data, as well as you know calculate age by extracting the years from strings so you can pull information out of a particular string. Two videos in there to go and have a watch of how that's actually done from um, you know, splitting out uh, without having to do those formulas, the, the data and the text. Okay. 
Okay, I'll just click forward playing those videos. Let's go forward. Okay. New feature in Excel is checkboxes. So dropping in, you don't need to develop a tab anymore. Part of the controls, it's now on the insert tab to drop in checkboxes. I do like it. Okay. So you'll see in here, it's already in there on some of the what's new features and functionality. So you can go and have a look at um, what's actually happening in what's new in Excel. I particularly like the insider blog. Some of the products that we actually might play and spend a lot of time in, they don't put their what's new into blogs at all on the main tech community. What they do is they do it in the insider blog. So, for example, if it's PowerPoint or OneNote, you will see that there is a lot coming down the line in terms of insiders in OneNote. There's going to be the eyedropper. Um, it's going to be OneNote Copilot supporting inking notes so that you can actually do ink notes and Copilot is supporting you on inked notes. So if you've written your notes, Copilot will help you. So that all these interactive ink tutorials, for example, to be able to support you. One of the other functionality I particularly liked in here was create and manage approval requests for Word documents. So in your Word document, you can go into your apps and as part of your apps, you can actually do your approvals workflow and do that directly inside your work document. Now, your work document needs to be physically in your OneDrive or SharePoint to be able to kick off the app. So once it's saved there, you can do your approvals workflow embedding now straight from Word. You don't have to do it through loading up in Microsoft Teams. Um, that one's a bit of a win as far as I'm concerned, a one to educate your organization on if you use your approvals workflow in Teams, show them how they can do it directly in Word, okay? Um, the releases, uh, this is just a screenshot. There was nothing in particular. It was mainly lots of fixing of issues. Uh, here we go. Events and conferences. Uh, are we ready? Who's still around to win the uh, to win the ticket? Who's excited? Anyone excited to win the ticket? <laughs> okay. So, yes, I am presenting at the Digital Workplace Conference. As you saw with Rishi, I will be going in. I'll be talking about my infographic wheel, but that's not just all. It will be one, you know, what is, um, one, how did I build it and why did I build it? Why do I, how do I keep my information up to date? How do I make those changes? But it's more around how do I use it to drive forward adoption? How do I educate people using that particular infographic? So that when you download it, you might be able to do the same sort of thing. So what do I do to fast track adoption? and drive it forward. So if you're really looking forward to um, uh, being there, I would highly recommend going along to the Digital Workplace Conference. There is lots around that employee experience that I would highly recommend joining. Now, you see, I did tell you, I created a picture using um, using Copilot and Designer. I did a claymation picture where it's like going across the line. We're at the starting point in terms of giveaway. Now, what I'm going to do is anyone that wants to actually go, this meant it is based in Sydney. It is on the 31st of July to the 1st of August. So you need to be able to come to Sydney. If you want to be in for the ticket, what I am going to do is I'm going to do a random number generator and I want you to raise your hand. So the raising of your hand will give me how many people want to be in for the ticket. So you're raising your hand so you can go up to the raise button. You'll see on the on the menu the raise the hand. If you want to be in for the ticket, raise your hand. And then once I know how many hands we've got raised, I'm going to put it into the number generator of how many people we've got. And who wants to be in to win? We've got everyone now. Last chance. Raise your hand if you want to be in to win. Oh, unfortunately, Gabrielle, yes, if you're in Argentina, that makes it a little hard. Come to Australia. You'll have a fabulous time in Sydney. Okay. Anyone else? Three, two, one. Okay. So you can see that your hand. I'm going to bring up the random generator. We've got one to seven. Okay. We are good. Are you going already? Can't wait, Gemma. Yeah, yay. We'll see you there. From one to seven, generate number four. So number four, Serena, you win yourself a ticket. Yay, Serena. That's very exciting. What are you looking forward to most, Serena? Come on, come off mute. Yes, 
Serena. You gonna come off? Can you come off mute? Do you want to come off? You don't want to come off mute. That's okay if you don't want to. So, Serena, what I'm going to do oh, is sorry, I couldn't. I, I, I lost. I lost uh, connection on my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> the important bit of all time. I know, right. Congratulations, Serena. I've got a code to give you that you can actually put in on the site. So what I'm going to get you to do is if you'd like to message me your email address, so you can just do it in, um, you can do it in private chat in here if you like, or you can email me. Anyone can email me at any time if you prefer it that way. So I'll put my email into our chat here okay, so on pointsolutions.com you can always email me and what I'll do is I'll actually provide you with the code so that you can get cool. your free ticket and I look awesome. forward to seeing you there come over and say Thank hi you. to me we'll do you're Ta very welcome okay last but not least so congratulations Serena fabulous um there's the um, co-pilot security and governance AMA some of the um, results from the last AMA are in there to go and have a look the events catalog is available online for you lots of fabulous community day events you know in terms of the events don't forget where do you find so I've put all my information on the where do you find which I had at the beginning is now towards the end so my wheel, um, where you can go and watch the recording, it will go live. Even though you'll see the recording coming up, you won't be able to watch it in chat. I will put it live on my YouTube channel. The Collab Talk videos answering questions. The last session I did at Copilot Studio when it came to talking about um, uh, Copilot in the fast lane, all the different adoption resources, where do I find my information, what are the other user groups that are out there. My recordings from past sessions are actually available in the presentation. But important to know in terms of what's next, the next user group, it's going to change its day. Ordinarily, I always do on the first Tuesday of the month. Every now and again, I swap it to the Friday. Sometimes does it might happen twice, you know, sometimes one to three times a year. We'll swap it out to the first Friday of the month. So next month, we're actually going to run on the 9th, on the Friday, because Microsoft are actually coming in, the communications team is coming in of how they actually drive forward all their internal comms using the Microsoft tools. So what do they do? How do they keep this, their staff up to date across um, across the whole you know, ANZ stack? So we're going to, um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to having the team come in and speak. So hopefully you're looking forward to that too. I will take that information live fairly soon up on Meetup for you to be able to join. Don't forget the presentation is available. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, you'll be able to go back and have a look and I'll put these recordings up very soon. Thank you so much everyone for coming and congratulations, Serena. Please feel free, as I said, to email me so that I can give you your code. Okay. Thank you for joining everyone and I'll, I'll drop off and sorry for the um, troll. <laughs> Not that I could do much about it. It's the first time, eight, over eight years and it's the first time. No. Thank you all. Okay, recording.